Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm excited about this video tonight because we're drinking whiskey. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Old Granddad 114. And it's confession time. I was, how do they say it? Today years old when I realized that Old Granddad is a Jim Beam product. Did you know that? I didn't, and I'm certainly okay with that. Not that it matters if I'm okay or with it or not, but I've really turned it on when it comes to Jim Beam this year. Well, I've turned it on to a lot of different whiskeys this year, but I kind of poo-pooed Jim Beam for a while, and I think they're doing some great things. They have their standard line of whiskey, then they have all these kind of side stuff that they're doing. I've been really enjoying it. Did their distillery tour a couple months ago. I'm gonna go back and do a tasting in a couple of weeks, and I'm looking forward to that heading back up to Kentucky with my friend Scott. All right, old granddad. Another question for you here. Did you know that Basil Hayden is old granddad? Not the whiskey. I'm talking about Basil Hayden Sr., the dude, is old granddad in the sense that, well, that was his nickname. And his grandkids called him old granddad. And his grandson, when he was running the whiskey company, named this whiskey for his grandpa, Basil Hayden Sr. Now the whiskey also is the same, same mash bill in both these bottles, 63% corn, 27% rye, and 10% malt of barley. To me, like in my mind, I think that is a great mash bill. I like high rye bourbons, and what about you? Do you care about mash bills? Is it something you look at when you're looking at whiskey, you're looking to find a new whiskey, or you're thinking about what you drink? Do you even know what the mash bill of the whiskey is that you drink? Probably if you're watching whiskey YouTubes. Okay, this bottle is $32.99 at Total Wine. I feel like I paid less than that when I bought this bottle. I think you can find it in the bay for anywhere between $26 and $32. If you're in a secondary store, you're probably gonna pay more. And I find it to be readily available. Usually when I go to Lucan's Total Wine, most of the stores I find Old Granddad on the shelf. It's non-age stated. And I think that's pretty much all the specs and stats. 114 proof, of course. So I have not had any Old Granddad 114. I bought this bottle watching other YouTube channels it's one they talk about quite often. So I picked up a bottle probably six months ago and it's been sitting on my shelf waiting for me to pop the top. I finally did it today. Poured this in the Glen Cairn about 25 minutes ago, maybe 30 minutes ago. And it's been sitting there waiting for me to take a sip. I really was interested in this bottle too because I think the specs and stats are very similar to the rare breed or in my mind, I kind of think of them as a similar purpose kind of a whiskey. You could sip it, you could put it in a cocktail. It's not that expensive, pour it over ice. You're not gonna feel really bad about that at $49.99 for the rare breed. The biggest difference between these two whiskeys, of course, is we have the Wild Turkey Profile versus the Basil Hayden Jim Beam Old Granddad Profile with the higher rye, 27% versus 13% in the Wild Turkey. And one of the purposes for me as well is that Mrs. Captain doesn't really like the Wild Turkey Rare Breed. There's something in the flavor profile that doesn't really suit her palate. So I've been trying to find something else that she does like that's a high rye bourbon as opposed to the high rye rye that we normally drink just to kind of mix it up for her to keep some variety and keep things, uh, you know, interesting. I find that some of the guys that I know, they drink the same two bottles of whiskey. I know one guy who drinks the same bottle of whiskey, just drinks Evan Williams. And that's actually, he has some Woodford Reserve recently. So I guess he's stretching his boundaries a little bit. But I think I, it's good to have a variety, try different whiskeys, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But we're talking about Old Granddad 114. When you look at online, I don't feel like, like if you go back to like 1989, I think the bottle looks almost exactly the same when I looked at images on the internet, unless they're using recent pictures, but I assume that they're using 
the pictures from those actual bottles from the late 80s and they look pretty much identical to this one. The only other thing that I find interesting about this bottle is I thought it was a screw top. I thought this was like a plastic screw top, but no, it is a cork. It's a nice fat wide cork, but no, not a screw top and that's great. Okay, let's get at it to keep this video not too, not too long. I usually find my whiskey videos to be going a little long. So I've been doing the shorts. They're kind of just easier to make. Just can kind of put them out, trying to put out a video every other day on the whiskey side of things while keeping track of the books that I've got to do for the book side of the channel as well. So I do like to do the long form ones, but occasionally they do drag on, but let's get at it. Old Granddad, 114. Cheers. It's a quick sip to wake everything up. I found it to be, man, a little, a little nutty there on the, on that quick sip. Just, I guess alcohol and nutty. That was just kind of my first impression, but. On the nose, it's some of those typical bourbon notes with a twist with that high rye. I can get some of those rye notes. Mm. Again, I do drink a lot of rye. I drink a lot of the MGP rye and the high rye rye. And so that profile kind of that little bit more drier profile notes, uh, they do appeal to me and something I look for in a whiskey. Not that I'm opposed to drinking a sweet bourbon or a sweet cocktail or something, but if you, here, you can have one of these two whiskeys tonight. I'm probably gonna pick whichever one I feel is like the drier, the, uh, the higher rye, if I know the mash bill or if I know the whiskey specifically. This is definitely those, definitely a bourbon, definitely high rye, get uh, some of those, uh, some of those spice notes, a little bit of cinnamon. A little bit of alcohol, if you go in there a little too deep, 114 proof, of course, so. Maybe not as much as I expected on the nose, but I mean, 114, it's not, that's not a crazy high number. It is pretty high, but I mean, we have some, some of these Jack Daniels, the single barrel barrel proofs, 130 plus proof. Um, I have some other whiskeys that are in the 20s and 30s, and it's a noticeable difference. This is kind of nice, a little bit, little bit of sweetness in there. Getting a little bit of nuttiness. Mm. I like it. It's uh, not overpowering, but it's a nice nose. Again, cheers. Mm. Yeah, there's some heat. Oh, another, I keep getting that nutty, nutty profile there and it just, it doesn't linger. It just kind of pops in and then it's gone. Definitely high rye. It got some, uh, some rye spices, some cinnamon, maybe a bit of orange on there. Uh, it's, I think it's pretty nice. It's uh, a bit different. So Basil Hayden, I've had one bottle of Basil Hayden that I've opened. I just picked this up a couple of days ago. This is the uh, Basil Hayden 10 year. I haven't popped the top yet, haven't found the uh, time. The only other Basil Hayden that I've had is their toast. And I thought it sounded cool. I thought it was like a toasted bourbon, but no, the Basil Hayden toast is, instead of they've replaced the, um, and the rye with rice. It's, it's like a red rice whiskey and it's very flat and unappealing and boring. And so I hadn't, I've actually never tried regular Basil Hayden bourbon. So that's on my, uh, that's on my list. But so I haven't had this exact recipe because the Basil Hayden bourbon and the old granddad, it is the same, it is the same whiskey. It's the same dude and the same whiskey. It's nice. Again, 
some cinnamon, some spice, bourbon profile. Just to get some warming heat, some lingering spice on the finish. It's dry, it's not very sweet on the finish. Um, I like the profile. I like Old Granddad 114. I think the next time I go to the store, I'm gonna pick up another bottle, just have a backup for this one. I think it's worthy from that. I don't think it's an excellent or a great whiskey. Do I like it more than I like the rare breed? The answer is no. But do I think it's a great value? I do. For $32, 114 proof, and a different flavor profile than the wild turkey, I think it does deserve a place on my shelf. And if you haven't tried Old Granddad 114, and I think I might pick up, the, I think they have a bottle and bond and just an 80 proof bourbon as well. Maybe I'll pick up the bottle and bond. Usually the bottle and bond products that I've tasted have been really good. Some, I don't know if it's the proof or you know it's at least four years old. Uh, I don't know what the difference is, why I feel like most bottle and bond products that I've ta tasted have been pretty solid. So if I can find the Old Granddad 114 or the Old Granddad Bottle and Bond, I'm going to look that up. Have you had that? What are your thoughts on the Bottle and Bond Old Granddad? Is it readily available? I don't feel like I've seen it on the shelf. I've seen their standard and I've seen the 114, but I haven't really been looking, so I don't know. But do you have the Old Granddad 114 on your shelf? I think this is a great addition. And if you like to make cocktails, and if you want a different flavor profile than a wild turkey and these other kind of mid-proof uh, bourbons, I think the Old Granddad should be on your shelf. It is a great value. So that's my video for tonight. If you enjoyed it, like it, so it's free. Subscribe to see more of my content. I do both whiskey and book reviews. And for now, you know what to do. Turn the pages, my friends, and stay thirsty. Cheers.